In 2010, Grace Wang had antiseptic solution injected into her epidural. She almost died and is left paralysed. The antiseptic, indistinct chlorhexidine label B, was mistaken for saline on the left. Three weeks before the Grace Wang incident, another anaesthetist accidentally drew up indistinct chlorhexidine and was trying to inject it. Luckily, they were unable to locate the epidural space. This profound near miss was reported, yet nothing effective was done to prevent the tragedy three weeks later. The Grace Wang investigation recommended all skin antiseptic solutions be coloured in a way which distinguishes them. Sadly, this recommendation wasn't followed. Instead, an alert was sent out which overlooked the importance of tinted antiseptic solutions, and accidental chlorhexidine injections continue to occur. Mary McClinton had a cerebral angiogram where it was injected into her brain. She died in agony two weeks later. A grandmother, Gina, had it injected into her leg, later requiring amputation. Babies have been fed chlorhexidine. It's been injected intravenously, causing death. The list goes on and on. Staff responsible for purchasing antiseptics and other devices in each hospital are often unaware of frontline issues. So if indistinct chlorhexidine poses such a significant risk, why hasn't it already been banned? In Australia, the TGA could ban it. Their reasons for not doing so are lack of reports into their error reporting system. This is where problems with error reporting become apparent. Each state and each individual private hospital has their own reporting system. These systems don't communicate with one another and most refuse to release their data. The TGA has their own reporting system, which the vast majority of frontline staff have never even heard of. Many reporting systems don't have a search function, impairing data retrieval. South Australia, 7% of Australia's population is the exception with their fairly modern safety learning system. This only covers public facilities. Also, many cases go unreported. From a brief search, they reveal three cases, one injection into an artery, another into a venous catheter, and yet another into the brain of a newborn via their ventricular drain. We've approached the manufacturers. Some have worked with us to add colouring to their antiseptic. Others haven't, claiming they don't need to, as their solution is approved by the TGA. The Australian Commission contacted the TGA in May, requesting suppliers ensure chlorhexidine is distinctly coloured. After another recent case, the Anaesthetic College sent out a high-priority alert indicating only highly tinted solutions be used. And over 500 people, mainly frontline staff, have signed the petition to ban indistinct chlorhexidine. There's hundreds of unnecessary hazards just like this in our hospitals. This is the result. Medical error is the third greatest cause of hospital death. Give frontline staff the power to improve their work environments and we can fix this. Please sign the petition and encourage the TGA to ban indistinct chlorhexidine and give us an avenue for many effective safety interventions to follow.